afternoon and welcome back to my channel. I'm Janderson. I've got little Dillis here with me today. Pippi sat elsewhere in the room but asleep. So today I want to answer some questions that I've had from Rachel, Michelle and Emma. And the questions are all related to a condition known as ADHD. It's known as ADHD today nowadays Whereas before 1994, it was known as ADD and ADHD. ADD is Attention Deficiency Disorder. ADHD is Attention Deficiency Hyperactive Disorder. Since 1994, they've both been under the same umbrella of ADHD. It sounds a bit wrong in some senses when you're a perfectionist, as it were, in that you think, well, having attention deficiency disorder is certainly not the same as having the hyperactivity as well. But the ADHD diagnosis nowadays includes both. So it includes inattentiveness as one subsection of ADHD, and that would in the past be ADD. It has hyperactivity as another subsection, which of course is the ADHD. And it also has a third subsection, which is a combination of both of them, um, the inattentiveness and also the hyperactivity. So, of course, we do know that children with attention deficiency disorder, those, those um, students that we have who ha seem to be inattentive, uh, quite often are lacking in concentration, they are forgetful, they um, sometimes fall over because they're not looking where they're going and things like that. Um, attention deficiency dis disorder is actually just that, lacking in, in attention. And we certainly notice a lot of students in a special school seem to lack in attention, but that doesn't actually necessarily mean that they've got ADD. It is having a combination of, of those things together. Some of our students would often forget to take home, or they wouldn't be able to find even their, their, their coat or their jumper that they brought to school. Uh, they would not take newsletters home that were sent home, although the newsletters had been put in their bags, perhaps by a, a well-meaning teaching assistant, doesn't always mean that they get actually arrive home where the child may have on the bus taken them out for some reason to look at them or something, forgotten to put them back in. It's never done maliciously. We have to remember that these students are just children. So they don't intentionally set out to upset the apple cart or to make it difficult for other people. They don't do it intentionally at all. It's just part and parcel of the condition that they have and they can't help themselves. So if we, oh, I've written a book um, that's, that does explain ADHD actually here. Um, it's, it's my book on therapeutic trampolining, uh, which I wrote a couple of years ago. And it gives you in there different tables for um, showing you I, I know there's a chapter on, on there's a chapter on ADHD. So uh, there's a table here. I'll try and bring it nearer so you can see what it is. And that's possible issues that that can happen if if um, a student or even a partner has ADHD. Certainly, ADHD has become um, sort of in the news a lot lately. Some celebrities have been diagnosed with ADHD and of course you do think sometimes well that person doesn't seem that energetic or hyperactive but of course they may have the subsection which is just the attention deficiency disorder the in inactive the inactivity side of it um, so if we have a look at attention um, that's one of the, the one of the areas that I write about um, so they could have a sensory overload so that they lack attention they could um, not complete a task, concentration, they can be easily distracted. That goes for somebody with attention deficiency disorder, the inattention, as much as for somebody with hyper, hyper, hyperactivity. 
um, that they're easily distracted. They're hard to sustain concentration and they Oh, they're curious. Couldn't read my writing there, so small on here. Um, hyperactivity, obviously, full of energy. Um, behaviour. Uh, unfortunately, certainly with a lot of the students that we had, um, they were anxious and they could have mood, mood um, disorders. They often became very anxious because of the condition itself. So, you know, they, they didn't like being forgetful. They didn't like the fact that they couldn't concentrate. It's about finding ways to help and support them in these, which we'll go into in a little bit. Let me just see if there's any others on here. Oh, obviously they're persistent as well. I see that as a good quality, but they can be persistent. Um, constantly fidgeting. So what are some of these things that we could help us? There are some others on there, but let's just get back to what, how are the way can, can we support them in these? Well, there are fidget toys that you can buy now. They're very popular actually with, with all, all children. Um, so you can get, there's the poppet ones at the moment with all different colours, a bit like bubble wrap, but it's a toy and you pop the colours through all onto the other side and so on. They're very popular at the moment. There's all kinds of fidget toys. So if you go along to Amazon and you just Google in Amazon or you know on Google, um, you'll find and just put in fidget toys, you, they will come up with loads. My suggestion is, is that you um, order a few and see which ones actually your child is interested in and really finds good. Um, don't do as one parent did and order a load of the same thing because their child actually didn't relate to that particular item at all. And um, I think they sent them all back. But um, yeah, if you try a few, then just send back those ones that um, your child isn't interested in, if it's possible to send them back and they haven't, um, you haven't lost them or they've been used and, and uh, you can't send back kind of thing. So just take notice of that. But certainly fidget toys are very good because they do tend to fidget quite a bit and need some support in, in concentrating. Now for some of that, I would say, that meditation is particularly good. So there's lots of free apps, free meditation apps, um, certainly available um, on online now. Again, just Google it and you'll find the meditation apps that are free. Free meditation apps and they'll come up with loads that you can have. You can certainly get them on YouTube, but then you've got the distraction of the interruptions all the time. So just Google it and find free ones and, and, and choose which ones you want. Um, those are very helpful in that you can give those meditation apps you can let the student have them as a treat some people might use them at the end of a session when you want them to work but I would tend to give them at the beginning to get them in the right frame of mind to work so I would give them a meditation or a therapy that helps them to calm and relax so that they then can be in the right frame of mind to do whatever it is you ask them to do so for some people it would be meditation tapes and it's certainly help if that does work because it's something they can use for the rest of their lives. The other thing, um, reflexology worked for some of my students, which is um, kind of foot massage. Um, vibroacoustic therapy is a kind of music, which it's, it's music which they don't hear, which affects the vibrations that it affect the different parts of their body that certainly helped with some of the students music therapy itself in its very many different ways can support somebody who's got um, ADHD and you may want to use it to get them in the right frame of mind before and you may even want to allow them to have headphones on while they're working to listen to a piece of music that in the right tempo that encourages them with their work. So for some children, that, that's what they need. And certainly for some children with ADHD, they need some white noise background. They can't just have complete quiet. It doesn't work for them. So what we have to remember is, you know, what, what can we do that will help them to be able to get on with, 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 what, with the task at hand? So how can we support them to do that? Because let's remember that everybody is different on this earth. And for some people, they need complete quiet to get down to something. For other people, they don't. I know I, I, I was brought up in a, a household full of, of children 
um, my, my brothers and sisters, there was no way I was going to get any quiet. So I got quite used to working in, in a lot of noise, and, and I, I certainly don't mind working in noise now because I grew up working in noise. Um, so for some students, certainly with ADHD, noise they find beneficial. Now for a lot of students also with ADHD, they find it very difficult to sleep. I know I had one boy um, who used to come to see me who asked for boxes from school, if we had any spare boxes he could take home so he could try them to sleep in because he wasn't sleeping at night. Now some people might say that drugs are the answer to that, I would say no, again meditation takes might be the answer to that. There may be um, a certain routine that you do, um, there may be a certain um, drink that they have at the end of the day. Then, there is certainly benefit, as we all know, in having some kind of routine that happens before they go to sleep. So it's not all over the place and nobody knows what's happening from one night to the next. They may need some kind of routine. And I've certainly found with students with ADHD that they need routine in their school life as well. So for some of our students, they benefited from using the teach stations, which we use for children with autism, but children with ADHD found they were beneficial as well in that it's a very structured way of learning. So they have different tasks to do um, and it, it's, sometimes it's timed as well. So um, structure sometimes for some children with ADHD is important to them. They need a timetable. They need to know what's happening in the week. They need to know what's happening in the day. They need to be able to know that this is going to happen um, today and this is what you've got to look forward to and so on and so forth. Another thing that helps is if you give them a blank book at the beginning of term, so it's, it's a book with blank pages for them to doodle in, to write in, to scribble in, to do whatever they want when they can't concentrate. So you could call it their concentration book. It doesn't matter what you call it, what they call it. It could be a list to do things or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's theirs. It's theirs personal. And I would have, they're very cheap to buy, as you know. So I would have a few uh, available for them um, throughout the year. And I would always keep spare ones so that if they come into school and their sibling at home has hidden the thing um, or it's been taken on the bus by another child who, who thinks it's a good joke and so on it's it's not about making life worse for that child who already is upset because it's not there it's about being their guardian angel who's got one ready oh here you are tom i've got one here for you don't worry you know instead of making some big issue you've left that book and you know, it, it, it's not a problem. Don't make it a problem. Um, so th that's quite a good idea to have handy for them. Um, let me think, what else? They, they can be, let, let's think of the positives then. Um, they're energetic. So that energy, if they're hyperactive, if they've got the hyperactive side of it, um, that energy can be used in, in sport and so on. It might be some sport that they're interested in. They can use their energy in that. They, um, it could be that they become a workaholic because they, they, they want to get something finished and they're very energetic and it can be used in that way. Um, and that's always good to have in the workplace, isn't it? They could be spontaneous. Um, a lot of um, people with ADHD are spontaneous, which is great. They're the kind of life and soul of the party. They're the, the, the ones who um, are open to anything new, anything different. They're the ones who may, if, if you're married to somebody who's got ADHD, they may be the ones who say, or, or you've got a partner who is, they may be the ones who say, um, let's go away for the weekend. I mean, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> um, another um, good side, I'd say, to ADHD is that they, they are often creative and inventive. Certainly, um, Thomas Edison, after his death, it was claimed that he had ADHD. Um, he was asked to leave school at a very early age, but that was better for him because his mother encouraged all of his um, inventiveness and his creativity at home. He didn't just in invent the light bulb, um, for instance. He invented lots and lots of things, which if you want to Google him, you can find out. Um, Hyperfocus is another thing, and I'm sure Edison might, must have had this, where they uh, so into one particular thing. It could be a hobby, it could be a leisure pursuit, it could be a sport, it could be a work-related thing. They, they only can focus on that. So anything else that's happening around them, they're lost to it. And you think, oh gosh, they're, they're, they're not even listening to me. Well, actually, they're focusing on something which to them is important. Now, 
that surely can be good for society as a whole if it's something that's beneficial to society. So it's about looking for the positives, looking for the benefits and trying to steer them or to help them, support them in those things that interest them that would be good for themselves, for the family, for society at large. So it's looking at it like that. Um, have I missed out anything? Let me just look back at the book. Um, oh, I've said, I, I'm not sure if I've said one of my students um, who um, had um, ADHD um, pretty seriously, severely, and w would have about 30 behaviour incidences a week. What helped him was um, neurofeedback. So neurofeedback is a kind of brain training um, You have electronic pieces that actually they, they don't hurt at all. There's nothing that's it's it, it's something that supports and helps them. It doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't do anything bad. It only does good. All right. There's nothing negative from it as opposed to drugs, which some people do go on to drugs, and I would always say that's a last resort before some kind of therapeutic intervention. But neurofeedback is, is certainly technology, but it's also therapeutic in what it does in that it retrains the brain in, in certain things. So he went from not being able to um, not being able to reason things out to being able to reason things out. So I can remember his carer came to see me and she said he'd gone to a youth club and um, somebody had, had punched him and he'd only just started the youth club and she said she was so worried because the first thing he would do is punch back but because he'd been see, receiving neurofeedback training he instead he said to the boy um i've just started and i know that's a rule that we're not supposed to do so i'm gonna have to tell the person in charge that you're punching people and she said he reasoned it out and he'd never done that before so yes, neurofeedback is known for that to help them with their reasoning and so on. So that's, that's pretty good. It's quite an expensive um, kind of thing, but we bought, bought it into our school and trained staff have been using it and we found it extremely successful, particularly so for children with ADHD. So there are lots of different therapeutic interventions that would certainly help and support students. It's looking for the right one that, that meets the needs of that particular student and then helping them to be able to use it as and when they feel the need for it. So that's therapies as well as fidget toys that might help them. It's looking for different kinds of things that will support them in coping with um, something that is known as a condition, but can also be a very positive thing to have. Okay, so I hope that's helped. If there's anything else that you want to know about then obviously contact me like um, Rachel, Emma and Michelle did and I will do my best to help you. So it's bye bye from us isn't it Dylan?